evening, I was actually taking a walk with my father, as we do on evenings when I'm at home. And as we passed by the court, my father said, when I used to go to court, and I turned and looked at him like this, and I'm like, Daddy, you don't go to court anymore. And the look in his eyes were quite sad. He looked at me and said, how can I go to court when I can't read anymore? I can barely read, even with my glasses and a magnifying lens. I looked at my father, who in his heydays used to be so addicted to reading that he couldn't sleep without light because he just had to wake up at night to read. And he read almost all through the night every day for all of his young age. And now, um, towards his retirement, he had gone to study law and was called to bar at about the age of 65. And that has become his favorite pastime ever since retirement. And today, he couldn't go to court. Now, we humans do not usually realize how fragile we are and how fragile parts of our body are. Hence, we don't take care of our body. And by the time we begin to grow old, cumulative effect of uh, living carelessly sometimes, or maybe ignorantly, begins to tell on us. Welcome to the Psychologist NGTV, where we help you live a fulfilled life and maximize your potentials. Today, I'm going to be discussing screens and us, or maybe our devices and us. And by devices, I'm talking about our computers, television screens, our phones, our tablets, and what have you. Now I'm going to make this in two parts because I want to make this particular part very brief because I don't want to overload you with information that's going to make you miss out on you know, very relevant information. Please stay with us. If you haven't subscribed to The Psychologist NG TV yet, what are you waiting for? Just click on the subscribe button and enable notifications so that you can be notified of all our future videos. I promise you, you won't regret it. Now talking about um, our devices and us, today we're gonna to focus on uh, blue lights. Now each time I have a discomfort or a disease or uh, an ailment, the first thing I try to do is to search for the etiology of the sickness. By that I mean, I try to look into the cause of the sickness. Now most of the diseases, the ailments, and the discomforts we suffer actually have uh, causes from our daily lives. And sometimes, if it is not too late, there are some things we can do, you know, to reverse that situation without actually taking medication. Of course, it's no news that I'm a psychologist and psychotherapy is mostly about, you know, getting cure for our diseases, both physical and psychological, without clinical measures, you know. So using psychological means to, uh, treat yourself or to help yourself without having to take medicines. And most times it works. But when it's too late, you might have to go clinical. Now, some time ago, I, I was using my phone a lot at that time. I began to have great discomfort, itchy eyes and red and teary eyes. And I stopped to think, you know, what's really happening here? And it occurred to me that I had been using my devices, my phone a lot, and probably that could be the cause. So I did a few things and Lo and behold, within a couple of days, the redness in the eyes cleared, the itchiness was gone, and I didn't have to use glasses. And I remember my friend saying, oh, I remember when I felt like that, I went to see and I got a pair of glasses. She was surprised I did nothing to, and it just went just like that. Now, another instance was when I was having pains in my knee. And uh, I was just thinking, why? Why these pains? Uh, it wasn't going away. So I stopped to think really hard, and I discovered that my car seat was too close to the steering and that was putting a strain on my knee. And I just shifted my car seat back and that knee ache went away. Now my friend was having the same issue. She was complaining of her knee and the pains and how she needed to go see um, a doctor about it. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. Why don't you try adjusting your car seat and then maybe drive like that for about a week or two and if the pain persists, then you go see your doctor. And she did that and the pain just went away, disappeared, and she thanked me. That's why I said, when you learn something, share with somebody. Please click on the share button and share this link with your friends so they can get informed, they can live healthier, happier, more fulfilled, and maximize their potentials. Now back to blue lights. Now because some people want to know before they believe, 
And because I also read about a, a story that was written by a freelance writer that said um, maybe the blue light was not affecting you as much as the yellow lights on your screen. And so I would like to explain a little. Now, the light that comes to us as a daylight or white light from the sun and every other light that we see as white light is actually a spectrum of light ranging from the infrared light at the head of the spectrum, and then you have the red light, and then you have the orange light, and then you have the yellow light, and then you have the green light, and then you have the blue light, and you have the ultraviolet light, light, ultraviolet light at the base. Now, the lights or the colors of light at the uh, height of the spectrum actually have longer wavelengths and less heat. But as you descend down the spectrum, you have shorter wavelengths and more heat. That's why blue light that's at the base of the spectrum, though it has shorter wavelengths, it actually emits a lot of heat and can cause harm. And you have ultraviolet light, which is not even visible, but we all know causes a lot of damage. Now there's white light, there's blue light everywhere we go. The major source of blue light is the sunshine. Okay, now, but all of our devices, our television screens, our computer screens, our phone screens, our, our tablets, and every other device, electronic device that we use, also emits blue light. Now, ultraviolet light, like as we know, in small quantities, little amounts of exposure, actually helps our body to produce vitamin D, vitamin D. Okay, but when we are exposed to excessive amounts of ultraviolet light, which people you know, who go to suntan actually um, are exposed to, if you are exposed to excessive amount of ultraviolet light without any protection, you are at risk of getting a sunburn, which is actually the least risk, the least risk, okay? You could also get skin cancers from there. That is why God saw us, you know, and he knows we live in the tropics where there's a lot of sunshine, and he enriched our skin with melanin. Melanin layer is actually the black color on our skin, and it helps protect us from the negative effects of ultraviolet light. I know I was talking about screens and us, but I'm going to digress a little bit. Now, it actually hurts to know that some people who live in the tropics here, like me, would actually buy lightning creams that would destroy melanin layer, making them more exposed to the hazards of ultraviolet light from the sun, especially in this era of a highly depleted ozone layer. So they're walking out there with lightened skin, but exposed to ultraviolet light and exposing themselves or increasing their risk of getting cancers. What am I trying to say? Please, black is beautiful. And when you use creams on your skin, soaps and creams, and creams please try to um, read the contents of this cream. And for the ones you don't know what they do, try to look up how they affect your bodies. Don't use creams that would destroy your melanin layer and expose you to ultraviolet light that can cause cancer. When our eyes are exposed to blue light and ultraviolet light, both from the sun and from our devices, sunlight, ultraviolet sunlight can lead to sunburned eyes, which is also called snow blindness or photokeratitis. Now, the anterior or the exterior of structures of our eyes, like the cornea and the lens, can actually block ultraviolet light from getting to our light-sensitive retina in our eyes, right inside our eyes. However, the cornea and the lens cannot block out blue light. That is why blue light is very dangerous, because they can actually go beyond the cornea and the lens right into our retinas, which are photosensitive or light-sensitive. Okay, so when you're out in the sun, it's really important that you keep your eyes protected. We are in uh, sunglasses that can block out ultraviolet light at 100%, because even the cornea and the lens that will protect ultraviolet rays from getting to the retina need to be protected also. So it's good to go out in the sun with your sunglasses. I never drive without my sunglasses. I'm trying to keep my eyes because I know I need them for when I'm old and I don't want to have to do without them. Okay, that being said, remember that your cornea and your lens cannot filter blue light. So blue, li blue light 
from the sun and from your devices especially can filter all the way through to the retina and cause you harm, you know. So you need to do something to protect your eyes from blue lights. This is a screen age. Everyone is using the screen some way or the other. Even our children today, because of coronavirus, they are doing online schooling and they have to do that either on their tablets or on their computers. And then that has increased their screen time. Ordinarily, they would spend a lot of time on TV and uh, part two of this video, we're gonna discuss televisions and how it affects us, uh, affects us and how we can um, protect ourselves from negative effects. But today we're talking about phones and tablets and computers and all of those devices. And what you need to do is that, first of all, you don't need all, you need all that glare from your devices. You can control the amount of light coming off your devices. Please ensure that you reduce the amount of light from your devices. Keep it at, you know, the minimum level that you can, you know, see without straining your eyes. You don't need the full light to be on on your computers, on your phones and all of your devices whilst you work. So always remember to reduce the brightness of light on your screens. That's one way you can help yourself. Now there's another thing you can do. You can get a computer glasses, a pair of computer glasses. Now these actually are structured or uh, formulated in such a way that they protect your eyes from blue lights. So you can use them when you work on your computer, when you're looking at your tablet, or when you're just looking at your phones. It will help out. Now, but not many of us want to go out there and get ourselves a pair of computer glasses. I mean, even if you had them, you wouldn't want to use them. Most of us engage in screen times just before bedtime when we wake up and uh, we may not want to use our computer glasses. Yes, another thing you can do. You can actually install a blue light filter. Now, if you're my friend or, I mean, I mean maybe I, a lot of people who have had contact with me, I would have told them this because I like to share information when I get it. So get a blue light filter application from the Play Store, from the iStore, depends on the device you use, and install it and then set a timer so that, uh, you know, it can help you control the amount of blue light that gets to your eyes, especially at night time. Yes, why you need to protect yourself for, self from blue light at night time. Blue light at night time gives our brain information and feedback that it is not yet nighttime, it's still daylight and it's not time to sleep. And that makes it difficult for us to fall asleep. And that's why we have increased cases of insomnia these days, because everybody is on their devices until late in the night, browsing the phone and doing stuff like that. You need to reduce blue light from your screens, especially at nighttime, so that you can fall asleep easily and prevent insomnia. In fact, so much said for today. Before we go, let's do a little recap. If you're out walking in the sunshine, make sure that you have a sunscreen or you use a cream that has at least 15 SPF, SPF factor, sun protection factor 15. Protect yourself because the ozone layer is so depleted and the ultraviolet rays are coming at us at more and more higher intensities, I might say. So make sure that your cream has an SPF of 15 or above. If you're sun tanning or sun bathing at the beach, make sure you use a sunscreen. If you're out driving in the sun or you have to stare at the sun for whatever reason, make sure you have sunglasses to protect your eyes from sunlight. If you are staring at your screens, for any time you use your screen, make sure you have computer glasses to protect you from blue light coming at us from our screens. Remember, blue light has shorter wavelength and emits higher energy and also can penetrate the cornea and the lens and go right up to our retina and can destroy that and can lead to macular degeneration, can lead to uh, regular headaches, can lead to digital strain, can lead to blurred vision and problems with sleeping. And also, if you cannot use your computer glasses regularly, try and have a blue light filter up on your devices. So that will protect you from blue light. Make sure you use them, not just having them on your devices. Use them and you can get these applications from either the Play Store or the iStore. And also, remember to keep your devices off at least two hours before you sleep. We don't want you to deal with insomnia. Here are some other things you can do to help you fall asleep. Keep your room calm and quiet. No television in your room, except you can deal with it without it interrupting your sleep. Don't take caffeine close to your bedtime and keep it locked onto the Psychologist Angie TV for more information from us to help you live better, healthier, and deal with some of these problems uh, without even using medication. 
so much for me from me for today and remember i love you so much Bye.